So during the debate, Bernie Sanders pointed out Joe Biden's atrocious record, and he explained how this shows that Joe Biden didn't have good judgment on numerous issues, right? And this is a leadership issue. If you don't have the foresight to see how the policies you support will impact normal Americans, then going forward, how are we supposed to trust that you're going to represent our interests? Because if you made bad decisions in the past, then you're going to still keep making bad decisions. So Bernie Sanders pointed this out, and this was a really important moment during the debate because it shows that Joe Biden is not someone who is going to represent ordinary Americans. Like, you might vote for him because you think he's more electable going up against Donald Trump, which is not true. Uh, but at the end of the day, we can't lie to ourselves and suggest that he is someone who would benefit anyone's life, uh, ex unless you're rich, right? Because as he said to donors in a closed-door meeting, nothing will fundamentally change if he's elected. So Bernie Sanders called out Joe Biden's record, and this is a really important moment. This is a little bit about leadership as well. Um, Joe talked about bankruptcy. Joe, if my memory is correct, you helped write that bankruptcy bill. I did not. All right. I and that bankruptcy not. bill, by the way, when we talk about education, we got 45 million people in America struggling with student debt. Some of them really struggling with student debt. And that bankruptcy bill made it impossible, very difficult for people to escape from that student debt. It was a very, very bad bill. You said, Joe, that a majority of the people in the Senate voted for it. You're right. Overwhelming majority. Overwhelmingly. Well, I voted against it in the House, and I was right. And I don't have to rethink my position, because that's what leadership is about, having the guts to take an unpopular vote. But it's not just bankruptcy. The difference between Joe and I on uh, higher education is four years ago. It was not a popular idea, Joe. I'm glad you're coming around now. Four years ago, when I said that public colleges and universities should be tuition-free. People were saying, Bernie, that's a radical idea. Well, you got states and cities and counties all over the country that are moving in that direction. And I'm glad that Joe is on board, but what leadership is about is going forward when it's not popular, when it's an, un when it's an idea that you get criticized for. So I'm proud of that fact, and I'm proud of my leadership on many issues. Joe, since the campaign, has come around. I talked about raising that minimum wage 15 bucks an hour four years ago, Joe. So did I, and I went out and campaigned $15 for it. an hour? $15 an hour, All New right. York City. Go talk to the governor. I will talk I to the governor. I'm not aware of that. All right. I am not aware you of that. You should be aware. Look. All right, four Here's years ago, it was a radical idea. Very few people in Congress we're talking about. It. I was well, so Bernie Sanders was right on all of these issues. Joe Biden was wrong on all of these issues. And I like that Bernie Sanders called out how, you know, the logic here doesn't make sense because you're now supporting bills that would basically undo the damage caused by your bills. So, I mean, going forward, are we going to, in 10, 20 years, need additional legislation to undo the damage caused by you in the event you're president? Like, you've got to understand that if you can't get it right, on a number of very basic issues when Bernie Sanders had it right, then why should we vote for you over Bernie Sanders? And I think that at this point in time, like most voters agree with Bernie Sanders on the policy and they disagree with Joe Biden. Hence why Medicare fraud is winning in every single state, even in states where Joe Biden is landsliding against Bernie Sanders. So we've won the policy debate. It's just a matter of really showing people that Joe Biden is not electable against Donald Trump. That's our last ditch effort because that's really why I'm assuming they're voting for Biden over Bernie, even if they dis disagree with Biden more. It's because they think he's going to be more electable. But what we have to do is point out how these bad policy decisions make him uniquely weak against Donald Trump. Donald Trump will take all of these issues and he's going to weaponize them and use them very effectively against Donald against Joe Biden. Donald Trump will brag about the crime bill that he signed into law. Donald Trump will brag about how he's against the trade deals that Joe Biden supported, like NAFTA, PNTR with China. So um, Bernie Sanders continued here. And I think that what he did in bringing up all of Biden's bad decisions was important, but it's missing one really key ingredient that I think would make this a more potent attack. It was going to pass well, anyway. I made it, let me finish. I made it incrementally better. I did not like the bill. I did not support the bill. And I made it clear to the industry I didn't like the bill. Number two, 
This bill now calls for the opportunity to fundamentally change the mistakes we couldn't correct in the bill the first time around. And that is why I support Elizabeth Warren's idea. And it's a very good idea. Senator Sanders, go ahead. Well, this is kind of circular logic. We're going to reform the bill that I voted for. Well, if you hadn't voted for it, and if you had rallied other people, as I try to do in the House voting against it, we might not have the problems with it we have today. You know, what leadership is about, Joe, and it deals with, you know, whether, you know, your opposition or your support, I should say, uh, for, uh, legisla for legislation uh, regarding gay communities and the so-called Defense of Marriage Act. You remember that bill, right? You remember sure the do. Defense of Marriage Act. It was, you know, gay marriage today is considered a little bit differently than it was 25 years ago. I remember that vote. It was a very hard vote. I voted against the Defense of Marriage Act. You voted for it. I voted against the bankruptcy bill. You voted for it. I voted against the war in Iraq, which was also a tough vote. You voted for it. I voted against disastrous trade agreements like NAFTA and PNTR with China, which cost this country over 4 million good-paying jobs. You voted for it. I voted against the Hyde Amendment, which denies low-income women the right to get an abortion. You have consistently voted for it. I don't know what your position is on it today, but you have consistently voted for it. In other words, all that I'm saying here, we can argue about the merits of the bill. Vice President Biden. It takes courage sometimes to vote, do the right thing. We can argue about the past and the future. This man voted against the Brady Bill five times. Background checks. Background checks. Five times. Number one. Number two, this man is the only, one of the few Democrats I know who voted to exempt the gun industry from being able to be sued. Talk about a special, special interest. So I think it's really important that Bernie Sanders brought up all of these different issues that Joe Biden was wrong on, and he's been on the wrong side of history consistently. And, you know, bringing up leadership is important, but none of these issues matter if you don't assign a motive to them, right? Why is Joe Biden consistently wrong? Does he just have really terrible judgment? Well, the answer is probably yes, but the reason why he always seems to side with special interests against voters is because he's corrupt. That is what you have to tie it to. You have to tie these policy decisions directly to the financial contributions that he has received from the industry. It's a corruption issue. That's why Joe Biden is wrong. Your bank rolled by the military industrial complex and the big banks. Of course, you're going to support wars. Of course, you're going to support pro-corporate trade agreements. Of course, you're going to support all of these policies that hurt normal Americans at the behest of special interests. And you've got to link it to corruption. Otherwise, it's not going to land. Now, Bernie Sanders did link it to corruption, thankfully, but I don't think he did enough to really make the case as to why Joe Biden is, in fact, very deeply corrupt. I have taken on every special interest there is out there, and that is what I will do in the White House. That's a very different record than Joe's. That is not a different record than mine. That is a totally different record than yours. All right? I mean, and it's manifested in this campaign when you're, you know, getting all this money from, you know, wealthy people and, and, and billionaires. So I think if, if you want somebody who will take to the White House what I've done for my whole life. Thank you, Senator Sanders. And that is take on special interest. I think I'm that candidate. Average Senator campaign Sanders. is contributing $44. Let's talk. It is astonishing to me that he thought that it would be persuasive if he told everyone that his average campaign contribution is $144. That's not something you brag about. That's something to be embarrassed about. $144, that tells us that you are taking a lot of very large contributions for it to be that high. Bernie's average donation is what, $18, $27? So $144, not something to brag about. So Bernie Sanders is correct to point out money in politics, but he's not doing enough because you have to sell voters on the fact that Joe Biden is corrupt. All of these campaign contributions, all of these private fundraisers he's doing with bankers and fossil fuel executives, it is corrupting him. And Bernie didn't sufficiently make that case. He didn't sufficiently tie Joe Biden's decisions to corruption. You've got to connect the dots for voters because they're not going to do that themselves. I don't think Bernie did that enough. 
And the problem with Bernie Sanders is that he kind of kneecapped himself here. He had surrogates who were willing to do this. Sefer Tichau penned an op-ed in The Guardian, which was phenomenal, that said Joe Biden has a corruption problem and is making him weak against Donald Trump. Bernie disavowed that attack. And now I think he's probably wishing he didn't do that because, I mean, by just saying Joe Biden has bad judgment, that's not enough to convince voters that they shouldn't vote for him because Donald Trump, you know, um, what did he say when he was clearly clueless? Look, I'm going to surround myself by the smartest people in the world. So like Americans, if they don't think about this in terms of corruption, they're just going to think, okay, well, look, Joe Biden has made bad decisions, but if he chooses a VP, if he picks a treasury of secretary, that's good. Then he could be pushed in the right direction. But if you're not specifically telling them that the reason why he supported that bankruptcy bill was because he took large contributions from the banks, it's not going to matter at the end of the day. And that's been one of my biggest criticisms of Bernie Sanders. It gets to that. He hasn't been direct and harsh enough against Joe Biden, and I get it. Bernie is not that kind of a person. We just have to grapple with that fact. He's too nice. He's too nice. And it may ultimately be his downfall, but if you're not specifically using the word corrupt to describe what's been fueling all of Joe Biden's bad decisions, voters just aren't going to get it. Like People have this vague sense or amorphous view of money in politics. They don't know what the issue is and how it affects politicians, but they know that money in politics is bad. So you have to make that picture clear for them because the media is not going to do it. Other politicians aren't going to do it. So you've got to paint a picture for them and you've got to educate them. Joe Biden voted for the Iraq war because he's corrupt. He's corrupt. He's taking money from defense contractors. That's why he supported this war. If you don't do this, I mean, what is there to be said? You can't prove to people. You know, judgment, the thing about judgment and why it's an attack that lacks potency is because, you know, you can have bad judgment, but if you surround yourself with smart people, you can correct that. You can try to improve your judgment, learn from your past mistakes. So there are ways that voters can rationalize and really explain away something that is just reduced to, you know, a decision that was bad judgment but if you actually tie it to corruption that's something that is really a powerful attack against joe biden and i'm glad bernie sanders you know brought up campaign contributions and money in politics but if you're not going to say the word corrupt if you're not going to really explain how joe biden has been corrupted it's not going to land and he tried to do this against hillary clinton and um on a debate stage and i forgot what he said but they asked him, can you name a single time when Hillary Clinton changed her position because of money in politics? He could have said the bankruptcy bill, and he didn't say something like that. So, I mean, it kind of backfired because of that. So, I think that Bernie Sanders is probably feeling as if he's trying to walk on eggshells to not be too divisive, not damage Joe Biden. But the thing is that Joe Biden is a liability against Donald Trump. And if you're not the nominee, Bernie, Joe Biden... Is probably going to lose to Donald Trump. It's not a foregone conclusion, but I mean, Jesus Christ, do we really want to roll the dice with him? So it's, this was a good moment, but there's a lot to be learned here. And progressives have got to stop playing nice with these liberals and corporate Democrats, right? If you're not willing to call out the corruption, then I think that all of these arguments about their judgment, it's just going to fall flat at the end of the day.